Well, good afternoon, everyone. Just stopped by home office here. Back on the road. Home office would be those buildings there on the left-hand side, the green buildings. We're on Highway 6, just north of Salmo. Picked up uh, some lights, some mounts for those lights, some wires, butt connectors, shrink tubing, another strap. And I think I have everything to make my trailer 100%. In five and a half kilometers, 100%. Period. Ah, not quite. There's two tires that are slightly leaking. I'm staying on top of that. But no point of fixing that until it becomes a bigger problem. And then, of course, my brakes are somewhat worn, but I don't really use my brakes, so they should be good for quite a time still. Definitely keep an eye on that. But on my DVIR right now, DVI, DVIR, right now I have to put in three defects every single morning and evening. And that is no uh, license plate light for the front trailer. No license plate for the rear trailer, and no ABS light for the front trailer. Looking at it, I'm pretty confident that it's just the light and not an ABS problem. Because it's corroded to heck. So I picked all that stuff up. And then uh, whenever I have time, I think I might have a little bit of time tonight to, I'll start with the ABS light, because that one, I really want to know if it's just the ABS light or if there's a problem with the ABS. So I'll replace that light first, test it. If we're all good there, that'll make me happy. The license plate lights, I'll do the rear trailer first, just, you know, to be more legal. And then I'll do the second trailer, which is only illegal. It's not even illegal, it's just not, it's just not perfect. It would be illegal, I think, if I, if I understand it right, it would be illegal if those lights were out and I did not mark them in my DVIR. As long as I mark them as defects on the trailer, I am doing my part. Now, having said that, I don't have to fix this stuff. My company does not expect me to fix this stuff. They expect me to mark it on my DVIR that it's a defect. Then they expect me to make an appointment at the shop or with dispatch so that it can come in for repair. The shops are always so darn busy. I could make an appointment and wait. I lose a whole days of work, possibly, depending on how busy they are, how long it takes them to do it. Or, because it's within my skill to fix it myself, I will fix it when I have time. Like tonight, I'll have time to fix some of it, some of it maybe all of it, who knows how long it'll take to fix. But it's not going to cost me any time or money. It'll, I guess it'll cost me some personal time. I could be sitting around being lazy in the truck instead, because I'll, I'll arrive around 4.35, my destination. I am totally speeding. Shoot. There we go. It's not speed. Ay ay ay. I'm not a speeder. I missed one sign and I feel embarrassed. But yeah, I'll fix them myself. It saves me time and money. Well, I don't saves me. Yeah, it saves me time. For sure, it saves me money. So I'm headed to Ericsson, which is just over Kootenay Pass, right beside Creston. It's kind of part of Creston. In 400 meters, turn left on Highway 3. Ah, 
running around handing in paperwork and all that stuff in the home office while I'm there, why not? I feel like I'm talking with my dentures out. I don't have dentures, it just feels that way. Turn left at the stop sign. Not that I would know what that feeling is like. I feel like I sound like people. You know what I mean. You guys are smart. SMRT. Now we're on Highway 3. Thanks, Garmin. Continue on Highway 3. Eastbound to Kootenai Pass. So the mountains in front of us are the bottom of the Kootenays. They're a lot more spectacular higher up. So up, up and away we go. Speed limit is 80 here. And hit 100 right there, okay. Make sure I don't speed again. Speed and safety are kind of put together in our company. We're huge on safety. That makes a lot of sense. The amount of money that I as a driver lose if I hurt myself and the amount of money the company loses if I hurt myself are, well, a lot. Ridiculous amounts of money get lost if I get injured, so. It's a, all of our jobs to do our diligence and always think think before we do think it through go the right path instead of banging our head against the wall doing it wrong over and over and over stand back think about it and make a strategic decision how are you going to knock that wall over instead of banging your head against it or if you stand back and look at it, you might notice there's a window or a door. Blue Coyote bed, bail, and boarding. I'm guessing bedding for horses and such. <clears throat> thought of it if you're going if you're like a cowboy that goes from rodeo to rodeo I bet you you'd love to stay a night in a place like that let your horses out of the trailer L long distance riding would yeah that would just suck for horses Last night, I got unloaded early. I asked dispatch before they went home to make sure I knew if I got unloaded on early where they wanted me to head, and that was Midway. Head to Midway, loaded in Midway today at 9.15, 9.30ish, and then headed to Ericsson now. And because I got loaded early yesterday, I had the time to stop in Salmo and get all the right lights and right connectors and wires and everything without being stressed out, I'm just relaxing. And then I'll get to Ericsson way ahead of schedule. There, I know for a fact there's no way of getting unloaded there. So I know I don't have to be in a rush. So thanks to me, trying to get unloaded yesterday instead of just going up oh, after wait to load unload in the morning I always try even that even today I'm gonna head for Ericsson I'm not gonna stop at a place that sometimes I sleep if I'm out of time I'm gonna head straight for the place where I'm supposed to unload I don't know if I'll spend the night there or not or spend the whole evening there I might just drop my trailers and head back into Creston but what if today is the one day this month that they're working late and they will gladly unload me? That means I'm ahead of schedule again. I always
always, always like my spare time at the end of the day instead of the beginning of the day. At the beginning of the day, I go, okay, this is what my schedule looks like. It looks like I'll have three hours of spare time to do whatever I want. What a lot of people do, a lot of truck drivers, a lot of, not just truck drivers, people in general at jobs go, okay, cool, I got three hours. Let's go have a nice lunch, bum around for a while, relax. Oh, three hours are up, let's go to work. And then you have something go wrong. I blow out a tire. Oh, that's gonna take an extra hour. Oops, now I'm running late an hour. On my case, the way I do it is, I'll, I'll have those three hours to bum around and go to a restaurant and have fun at the end of the shift. If something goes wrong, I no longer have those three hours, but I'm still two hours ahead of schedule. Yeah, I might be all work and no play. I think I might be that kind of person. But I consider, <coughs> excuse me, can't even swallow my own words here. <laughs> I consider my work play though. When you enjoy what you do, Yeah, I think that's a key to life. Enjoy what you do. The secret to life is enjoy what you do. If it's a temporary joy that leaves you hollow after, maybe don't do it. If it's a job that you're just miserable at, don't just go quit that job, but come up with a plan. It took me months to quit my job. Many, many, many months. Almost a year it took me to quit my job. It was nine or ten months from the day that I decided I was going to quit to the day I quit. I saved up the money I needed. So first off, I made a plan. I go, okay, what do I want to do? Decided what I wanted to do, and then go, how do I get there? Okay, I need money to get there. Okay, let's save up, save up enough money to get there. And not only that, I saved up enough money that I could pay for a school, and then also have a good, comfortable space of two months of having no job. What if nobody hires me right away? If I have two months of no job, I can re keep living and paying my bills just the way I am. And then go do it. Go do what you enjoy. I was a little nervous about this load today. Loaded me up. He just goes, what are your gauges read? He goes, you might be overweight. Before we do the paperwork, let's go take a look. I'm like, I don't know what my gauges mean. If you think I'm overweight, let's take a look at my gauges. So I went and looked at my gauges. My drives are at 69 PSI. Now my drives, I know what, what they mean. 69, we're underweight. We can go to 72, 73, be dead on weight. So drives are good. The bridge on my old set of trailers, dead on 70. 70 is max we can go. Well, the bridge was sitting at 73 PSI. 
So that's quite a bit over the max I could go on the last trailers. So that made me a little nervous. And then the uh, pup was 69 PSI. And on the last set of trailers, 60, about 66 was the max. So I'm like, uh, I might be over there too. But I did the math on the weekend on the two partial loads that I hauled last week. And I weighed myself on the scale. And according to that math that I did, I can go heavier on these these trailers. Turn that radio down. According to my math, I can go instead of instead of going to exactly 70. According to my math, I could go to 73 and a half, and on the tail, I could go 78. So that made me uncomfortable enough to just go, yeah, I'll just take the load as it is. So I hit the scale and 73, my math, pretty much dead, 73 and a half, pretty much dead on. So I was at 73 and I was uh, to, 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 to do 170 pound, so 170 kilograms light. So 73 is a pretty darn good number. That's a good number to be at. And uh, my bridge, I'm at 69, and according to my number, I got a, what did I say, 76 or something like that? Something, whatever I said there. Uh, 69, I'm only at 1,500. I, I can go another 2,000 kilograms. So, I think my math skills didn't let me down there. I think I'm pretty close. I was always very, very bad at math in school. Horrible. I got the answers all right, and I always failed everything because I did not show my work. Because I can't. I cannot show my work. The equations and crap that school gave me that made no sense. Teacher forced me to show my work on how I got to my answers. And I did, I scribbled it all down and confused the heck out of every single one of my teachers. My argument always was, I got the right answer. But I guess that's not what they were teaching in math class, not how to get the right answer, but teaching us how to get to that answer with their equations, what they deem to be the correct equation. I don't know, I just see the answers. I gotta scribble stuff on paper and whenever I talk through what I'm doing, I always get embarrassed because people look so confused. Like, what you're saying makes no sense. And yet, I will often come up with the correct answer. Unless it's really, really complicated stuff. Well, even then, I could probably come up with the correct answer if I just stopped and thought about it. Took the time to scribble. Like I said, my math seems to have done me done me correctly here. Of course, there's a variable that I can't really calculate into the equation until I get more data. So I'm going to keep hitting the scale, and that is that. The PSI does not directly relate to the weight. As you start putting weight on, the PSI only goes up a little bit. 
and the more weight you put on the faster it goes up so it's not it's not a direct link to each other if that makes sense they don't if 60 psi equals 600 pounds 50 psi would maybe equal 502 pounds 20 psi might be 220 pounds kilogram or whatever because it's just an airbag that flexes and expands so there's a lot more complicated math involved put our four-way flashers on as we climb here so it is a really really heavy load like it's it's heavy it's pretty slow going up these mountains here but that's okay anyway I've been babbling all right long babbling along long enough can barely speak just said the smoker is starting to come back in Penticton so that's kind of disappointing it looks like it might rain up here so considering that we're climbing Kootenai Pass and there's no, no smoke here yet that's a good sign so this is the pass where we had an open fire last week not sure how that fire is doing but I shall see as I go by. So, ask me questions. Any kind of trucking questions, personal questions, anything. If you are interested in anything, just ask. I might have the answer. I might not. I'm not super mechanically inclined, but I'm fixing my own lights on the truck so I can figure out some simple stuff. I can put my own fan belt on the truck. I think. I've never done it. <laughs> but I, I'm confident I can. So leave lots of comments. Ask questions. I enjoy answering questions. At, uh, home office there they were training doing free three new uh, drivers were getting orientation on uh, new hires so they uh, going through orientation I saw Morris he's, he's our HR guy I guess he goes through orientation with the guys and all that so I went up there and had a quick chat with them and gave them my advice why not why not give them my advice seeing the company seems to like my style the way I run things for people that want to make the company proud and do things the right way why don't I share the way I do things and then hopefully hopefully they can enjoy their job more too anyway see you guys hit that thumbs up and ask questions and smile I'm serious about that smile be happy see ya See you tomorrow.